Hope everybody is doing their best right now as we're going through this crazy time in our world. I'm Tony Bruski, host of Real Ghost Stories Online. Wanted to invite you and let you know about our other brand new podcast that we just launched, Help Kill the Time for You. It's called The Dark Side of Wikipedia. It's about true crime and dark history. We dive into some of the strangest, most disturbed minds and experiences from our history and examine their story, their Wikipedia entry, and then discuss the cases, the individuals, and the psychology of the events as we go through each and every story. Some of our first episodes include Ed Gein, the BTK killer, the new London school explosion, Amityville murders, Richard Speck, Amelia Dyer, the General Slocum disaster, Jeffrey Dahmer, and more. New episodes every single week. Check out Dark Side of Wikipedia. Search it. Subscribe wherever you download podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. It's available now with new episodes every single week. Dark Side of Wikipedia. Search and subscribe today and stay safe out there. Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, did the spirit of a deceased sibling return to help guide their surviving siblings? What did the spirit know about the future? That's today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. You can write in on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com and support our program. Become an EPP. That is an extra podcast person by going to ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash realghoststories. $5 a month supports our program. I know times are tough right now. That $5 a month is what keeps this show on the air. This is my real job. So uh, I appreciate it if you can allow me to keep eating. Uh, And we'll keep giving you ghost stories uh, in exchange. Uh, Every single uh, week, bonus episodes, all the access to uh, more than 300 bonus uh, episodes we've done. You get all the advanced episodes, videos, and more. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories. Tony and Carol Hughes joining you once again. How are you? This fine day. Hey. Hey. Happy to talk about ghosts today. Something uplifting. Something uplifting. Talking about ghosts. It's kind of funny. It's become like a positive topic. (laughs) Right. In the last uh, couple of months. Uh, Today we're recording this. It is the 6th of April, 2020. Uh, This is going to be airing uh, around the beginning of May. So uh, who knows? This is the week. Where the Surgeon General just said it's going to be like our 9-11 or um, at Pearl Harbor, which made, made me feel really great. Great ways to start the week. And then the same week, um, Donald Trump said something about the light at the end of the tunnel, which I'm assuming he's talking about a freight train. A freight train, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's I don't know what else it is. Big light up there. I think it's the end of the... No, it's a fucking train, you idiot. Um, so it will be interesting yeah. down the road, I think, Maybe I can do it. Maybe I can't. Because once this thing's over, maybe I never want to revisit it again. <laughs> but it could be interesting to go back and listen to you and I talk about this. Yeah. And see if what really did happen this week. It is going to be interesting. That's why I've been dating all these episodes. Because when somebody's listening to this show, because people listen, you know, for years and years back, there will be somebody listening. There'll be a lot of people listening. Thousands and thousands of people will be listening to this five years from now, 10 years from now. And going, oh, this is interesting, kind of chrono- chronologically how this played out week to week to week. Not that we're going to sit there and focus on it, there are the episodes, but it's um, it's a little, little snapshot of uh, of what's going on uh, in our, our world. But uh, now more it's than ever, nuts. 
He's trying to find things to escape with and uh, and listen to. And uh, I'm glad that we can uh, be part of that. I started to get into the Joe Exotic a little bit. Um, I've like one episode. And have you watched the Joe Exotic on? Um, no, I listened to Tiger the King? podcast. Yeah, I listened to that a while the back. The podcast was great. Yeah. And uh, so Joe Exotic was a podcast. Tiger King is the the documentary, but the podcast used a lot of the audio, I think, from the documentary, um, which is the first thing that came out about it. But it's that's another train wreck. It, you know, it's just one of those things where I go, I sit in there and I wonder, going, if COVID wasn't going on right now, would Joe Exotic be as popular as it is? Oh hell yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I don't keep it like, oh, it has nothing to do. We're going to watch Joe. Like, no, nah, if we were all at work and everything was normal, everyone, I think, would still be on Joe Exotic. It's almost it's I like so uh, too. because if everyone was at work, they would still all be talking about it. It would be I, I, because it's bizarre. I don't care if it's coronavirus time or not or regular happy rainbow and unicorn time. Yeah. Which I would like to get to eventually. I don't know that we've had happy rainbow unicorn time, but uh, if we ever do get there. That would be a good day. So, it would be happy. amazing. I think it's like every day in my uh, my daughter's life. It's a happy. It's the greatest day ever. Like the day the stock market crashed for the first time a couple of weeks ago. She's like, "It's having the greatest time on the golf course with me." And I'm checking my phone, going, "Oh my god, oh my god!" It's like this is the greatest day ever. <laughs> it's like I and love then you. You're like, put your phone away. Yes, and enjoy the greatest day ever. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So kind of what pulls you back to reality. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go to the first letter. It says a few days after my cousin had passed away due to an overdose. It was about 2.45 a.m. and I was facing my kitchen and woke to him peeking around the wall just seeing his face. And I wasn't able to move, yell, scream, or even blink because I was frozen. It felt as if I was dreaming, but then I realized I was wide awake as I was seeing him. After what felt like forever, he waved at me, and as he waved goodbye and leaned back behind the wall, I was finally able to move and I yelled, What the fuck? and woke my girlfriend who was lying on the other couch. She woke up in a panic asking what was wrong, and I told her I had just seen my cousin. After not being able to sleep, it was around four, and I'm finally able to calm down. So I started dozing off. He then again reappeared, but this time was at the end of the couch with his hands in his pocket at the feet of me. And yet again, I wasn't able to move, yell, blink, or even scream out. He was looking out of my window as if he was waiting for someone to pick him up. It was as if he didn't even notice he was standing over me, or I was even there. I didn't feel scared at the fact he was there. I was scared at the fact that I couldn't even move or even talk to him. I had a feeling of helplessness and felt as if my body was being held down yet again. And that's what terrified me. He then took his hands out of his pockets and looked at me and smiled. And his smile calmed me. And I felt at that moment everything was okay. He then turned and began walking towards my front door and then passed right through it as he left. I was then able to jump up and yelled, what the fuck again? My girlfriend again woke up and asked what was wrong now, and I told her I'd seen him again, and I was so mad I wasn't able to even talk to him the second time. And I began crying because I finally figured it out. He came to me twice in one night. He was there standing over me as if to tell me he was always looking after me and making sure I'll be okay. He and I were more than cousins. We were like brothers, and for him to come to me twice in one night was a very comforting feeling to know that he is still here with me and watching over me. What do you think? That's my favorite kind of story. Just because, I mean, it's so hard when you lose someone you love, especially tragically like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, most deaths are tragic to the loved ones going through it. But to see him and get that feeling of peace, mm -hmm. that's all you really want. And so many people never are able to get that. And so to have that, is such a gift. I, I'm like, he, he gave him a gift. I, I just think that's beautiful. It wasn't like I'm showing up at the end of the, the couch and he's going to point and go, you left the stove on. And that's it. That was the only purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so then your whole life you would be, what did he mean by that? What did yeah. he mean by that? It's like, maybe my stove really was on. Yeah. It's like, shit. 
Thank you. I'm glad you came back to tell me that. But it is looking out if it was that. But but no, I, I think you're right. I think it was just kind of a I'm here. I'm gonna I'm gonna be here watching out for you, and and that's that's what I'm that's why I'm showing because, up. Because like really, once you're dead, like is time really a thing? You know, does it really matter? Do you have some place you have to be, or could you kind of be that sort of? watching out for somebody I, I got a lot of shit on my list you know so if i'm watching out for anybody it's going to be a very select group of people you've got a lot of shit on your <laughs> list by how many people you're going to be effing with once you're dead yeah so yeah you will keep quite busy you yeah. know time will fly for you yeah next thing you know it's like well damn my kid's totally grown up yep she hasn't got time for me to mess with her anymore. <laughs> That's going to work. Or it'll be like, uh, Dad, stop messing with my kids, please. Um, and, and your grandkids, they're they're getting sick of you fucking with them all the time. It's like, uh, uh, let them know they're on my, that I'm here. Uh, just a little bit more, you know. I don't know. Little kids are playing and something weird happens. <laughs> and it's like, that was really weird. Hunt's grandpa. Yep. <sighs> <laughs> he keeps turning As tiger they roll their on. eyes. Yeah. Why does Netflix only play Tiger King? What is going on? That's grandpa. Grandpa. Yep. That's that's the plan, just to do really kind of bizarre things. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna be one of those ghosts that's that's saged away. If they start like using sage and shit, I'm just gonna laugh. Like, yeah, ooh, sage, yeah. Put that on turkey. It makes me go away too. Woo! <laughs> it's like fuck that. But wouldn't it be weird if they did sage stuff and you're like, whoa, it's like this barrier. <laughs> I'd be like, God damn it. I didn't know Sage had this power. I've been doing a, a guess it does. Yeah. That was bullshit all yeah. this time. God. <laughs> I don't know why what why it is that Sage has the power, but uh, apparently it does. Seems like garlic or something yeah. like that would have magical power. Sage is, I mean, it works with vampires. I mean, to me, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know where it originates, but it just seems to me like that's a very, like, not pungent spice. I mean, yeah, you taste it, but it's not like, oh, holy shit, garlic. You're like, oh, holy shit, sage. You know, you, you, typically yeah. it'd be something like really harsh, you know, and, you know, black pepper or, you know, how about, how about like Thai chilies? Oh, God, Thai chili. Like, wow. <laughs> you know, but you can't go around your house burning Thai chilies. You'll blind yourself with the fumes. Maybe that's why they look sage. It's safe. It works. It's not going to kill us, the living. So, uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Next letter says, my name is Samantha. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas, now reside in Kansas City, and have had a few varying experiences over the years. I've been an EPP for a couple weeks now and binge listen at work. Tony, I love your other podcast, The Grave Talks, and I support you there as well. Listening to your EPP number 29 right now, and a listener wrote in about uh, about what to do uh, about babies who, uh, who uh, pass grow up. Uh, I'm listening to this. I have a similar story. To tell you a bit about me and uh, the backstory on my ongoing experiences, I was an only child till about nine. Then we met my now stepfather and step siblings who have become my siblings. I acquired two little brothers and one little sister. We were happy with a few hiccups and one sad event. My baby sister was murdered by her mother's uh, by my by her mother's fiance. She was on life support for a few days, and they told us that she was brain dead and had no chance of recovery. We pulled the plug on a 22 month old. We pulled that plug the day before my 10th birthday. My mother taught us to cope with picnics and playing tag in the graveyard where she's buried. Sometimes she would come play tag with us kids. Now my sister's favorite thing to do was to open the dryer while it was running. For months after she passed, whenever my mom was super sad or super busy, the dryer would pop open and clang the door against itself. We all knew it was her. Minus her father, of course. He doesn't believe in the paranormal. Well, fast forward a couple of years and I was super worried about my mother as she got hurt at work and I had to step up around the house. The first night she came home, I had a dream. The first of many that have transpired. But that night she came to visit me and all she did was hug me. She was the same age as when she left us. I got a warm feeling and a sense that everything will be okay, that she was happy watching over us. I told my mother and she cried when I told her how it made me feel. I had similar dreams over the same year, all resulting in the same feeling. When I was in high school, she came and we were not in our normal spot. Instead, we were at our 
hunting cabin on an oversized deck, feet dangling over the water as the boards creaked behind me. And when I looked, a young girl appeared, but I knew it was her. Well, over the next two years, when this dream occurred, she looked different. She started growing up. I asked her about it. She would smile and say, I thought you should see what I would have become. We always had such long talks in those dreams about what she wanted, what was happening in our family's lives. My mother stopped believing that I was having these dreams and told me I was making them up. At times I wished I was. I never understood why she chose to appear to me and not anyone else. Before I went off to college, she appeared again after I was attacked, telling me that I'd be okay, only this time she was a young woman. Perplexed, the first thing I said wasn't, hi, sis, like normal. Instead, I blurted out, oh my God, you have boobs. She laughed like I imagined she would, like she would have in life, and said, really, that's the first thing you say? She still appears in my dreams from time to time, and yes, the dryer still pops open on my mother, and I even thought we have a newer dryer that's harder to open. Funny thing is, last year when I went to visit her, I took her nephew to visit for the first time, and we had a picnic and played tag, but he started giggling and running away from some unseen figure, and I asked who he was playing with, and he said, Auntie Kay. And as we cleaned up and headed for the car, I noticed a cardinal singing on top of my car. I've never had that happen before. Anyway, that's my experience with my sister. I love the show and I love the extra episodes. Can't wait to get deeper into your show. Thanks for the outlet. I have more experiences to tell if you would like to hear them. All the best, Samantha. It's an interesting concept that of if you die uh, as a child... Do you continue to grow in the uh, spirit world as a ghost? Do you continue to develop into adulthood and, and such? Well, I mean, obviously in that case. Yeah. But I think a lot of times children quit having that experience. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know, I don't know anybody off the top of my head who has had those experiences continue into adulthood. So it kind of makes sense. You know, if you're dreaming about it and that she would present herself as a peer, mm -hmm. but, but she know, but it's not like she didn't know it's her. Yeah. I think it's, you know, she knows it's her. It doesn't matter what she looks like. But that's pretty cool, actually. But, you know, probably as difficult as it was for the mom, you know, at a point the mom just shuts down. Mm -hmm. But she was always open to it. And so I think it kept continuing for her because she was open to it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's difficult, I think, to convey a dream to someone, um, especially in a topic like this. And then for the way that the mother's grieving to believe and accept right. it, you know, it's one thing to have the experiences in life, like the dryer opening, but then to say, this is my dream. This is my experience. Okay. Well then why doesn't the mom get to have those experiences too? That would be what I'd be wondering if I was the mom, if you're having them, right. why am I not having this? You know, why am I not being visited? Um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a very personal thing. And this seems to be how well, she is personally, uh, being affected by the whole thing. It's 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 good to see that the family uh, still goes and remembers this child and it's not just a, you know, that was horrible and then we, it's too difficult to go visit or do anything like that. They're trying to keep her memory alive and, you know, sharing her with I the, couldn't imagine going through that. That would be horrible. I could yeah. not imagine that. No. But when she said she went to, they had the picnic with her nephew, so it sounds like she now has a child. Yeah. Which is really cool that they still, she still feels that connected. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, few years pass and people don't still go, or they go in a different way because they can't get past the grief. Yeah, but it sounds like they they celebrate her more. Yeah, which I think you know, there's a big difference. And it's a good thing there to do, go. but an incredibly, I think, difficult thing to do as well. Right. You know, it's easy to say celebrate the life. Yeah, when you're first, in the, you got to yeah. grieve it. Yeah, when you're in that right. moment, it's not exactly celebrate time. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for sharing that uh, that experience with us. Eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two is our number. Hi, let's hear your story. Hey guys. So, 
I have a really interestingly long ghost story history. And after listening to your show for a couple months now and becoming EPP, um, I've noticed that what I thought wasn't very spectacular kind of probably was. So anyways, my uh, story begins in 2013. Me and my parents um, and my older brother, who at who's five years older than me, so he was rarely home, so he doesn't really count towards the story. Um, We moved into a new home, and um, at this point, the home was, it had been built in the mid-90s, so it wasn't old, didn't have any history like that. It did sit vacant for quite a few years, and then the family that we bought it from had only lived there for about a month before the dad got stationed somewhere else, and they had to move. So we moved in, you know, my, it was my parents' dream house, you know, it was super great. I was the only one that lived upstairs and it's kind of a balcony setting where up above the kitchen where the upstairs is, you can look down over a railing down to kind of the dining room area and then a hallway goes down to the three bedrooms that are upstairs. And so since my brother was never home ever, I don't even think he spent more than four nights in that house, um, being that he was 18 when we moved there. Um, I was alone upstairs and pretty quick after we moved there, um, right in front of my door in the hallway was a creek and it was um, my little white dog. I had a, we had three dogs at the time, two um, bigger herd type dogs, like blue healer, border collies, and then one little poodle mix. And um, the poodle mix wouldn't, it wouldn't creak with her, but everything else walking down the hallway, we would get a big creak and I could hear it in my bedroom. And, um, I would hear at night a lot. I mean, it didn't have to be night. It was just anytime I was in the house. Um, it would sound like my mom was coming down the hallway or maybe the dogs were coming to visit. And it started with just that. And I would kind of open my door, like, cause I'd hear the creak and think, oh, someone's about to come in and I, they wouldn't. So then I would open the door thinking a dog was there and they weren't. And I kind of wrote it off like thinking maybe it were, was the dog. Well, my mom works from home and, um, well, both my parents do, but my mom works from home directly underneath the bedrooms and she's a psychologist. And so she would also hear that, um, hear somebody walking upstairs. And she at first chalked it up to thinking it was me or again, the dogs. Well, we quickly realized after collaborating stories that it wasn't us, wasn't the dogs. And so my mom's like, I wonder if there's something here. And um, I never felt threatened by it. But as soon as we kind of acknowledged him and um, I call it a him, I got a strong feeling that it was a guy. Um, I started calling him Earl because, you know, I was a hilarious 13 year old and Earl was the funniest name in the world. So I started calling him Earl. Well, I think as soon as we acknowledged Mr. Earl, he got even more active and he was never threatening. I never felt scared of him, but my mom would hear him walking hard a lot. Like I'd be at school and she'd be here. someone hearing someone walk and even her, you know, clients at the time would be like, Oh, is your daughter home? And mom would be like, Oh, must be, <laughs> you know, and no, not home. And all the dogs are with her in the office with the clients. And so couldn't possibly be anybody. And, um, you know, my dad would be gone. But it got to a point where me and my um, my herd dog, Grizzy, she would be on the bed with me in my bedroom. And my door, I would hear somebody walk in down. It would be Earl, you know, and my door would kind of slowly creak open. And my TV was across my bedroom from my door. And I'd be watching TV and Grizzy, my door would kind of creak open. And she'd pop up and look at the door and follow something through my bedroom. And then every so often, my TV would just shut off. And then my door would just slam. And what would get us was the fact that the dog saw him and noticed him, too. We'd be all sitting downstairs, and we'd hear the creaking, and all the dogs would be with us. And they'd kind of perk up and kind of look up towards the ceiling, towards the upstairs, too. And it was funny because me and my mom, I mean, I got a kick out of him. He really never scared me. And I never saw him. I mean, he just kind of did stuff um, periodically. But it was funny because my dad, he kind of got angry with us. And he was like, there is not anything in this house. I work upstairs. He worked on the other end of the upstairs at the book of garage. And he's like, I work upstairs all the time. I don't hear nothing. And we're all downstairs eating dinner at this time. And my mom's like, okay, but, you know, promise you there's something up there. And he's like, no, there's not. Well, at that time, we heard a crash from his office upstairs. And it sounded like 
an entire filing cabinet got knocked over. I mean, it was a huge thing. It was, it was scary. And my dad took off upstairs thinking that, you know, a, something malfunctioned with, you know, the frame of the house and like something fell in or whatever. And he gets up there. There's not a thing. We all show up there or we all follow him up to the office and there's not anything out of place. There's not a window open. There's not a paper blown, nothing. And my mom just started laughing and she's like, well, Earl wanted you to know that he is indeed here. And my dad was like, well, shit, I guess he is. And he started talking about Earl too. And we would be walk, we'd be eating dinner all together and we'd hear Earl walk in. And my dad would be like, God damn it, Earl. Like, dude, just settle down. Like, you don't need to be walking all over. Well, one night I was having a sleepover with my friend and my mom had come upstairs and she, where she, they slept downstairs. They really didn't know as long as we didn't walk in the creaky hallway, they had no idea if we were up or not. My mom said, okay, midnight. You're going to bed at midnight. I don't want you guys tired and grumpy all day. Like, you're going to go to bed at midnight. You know, we're like, all right, all right. So we're laughing and giggling and watching movies and stuff and thinking that we're all cool because we're not going to go to bed at midnight. And um, we had the light on and movie playing. We were kind of playing around doing our thing. And all it was like right dead at midnight. We had heard Earl walking and stuff. And at that point, my friend, you know, she didn't really love the idea, but... She, too, was just like, okay, it's Earl. But um, right at midnight, everything in my bedroom just shut off, pitch black. And even my dog, she was up on the floor. She jumped immediately up onto the bed with us. And it was like, oh, my gosh. And by me and my friend would, like, click my lamp back on. And, I mean, everything, like, we could get it to turn back on. But I, like, clicked my lamp on. She's like, I think we should go to bed now. I was like, yeah, I think we should. And But this carried on for years. I mean, Earl would walk in. I had a doggy doorbell. It was like they were big in you know the early 2000s, but it was like an animal-shaped speaker and that you put on the inside of your door, and then the cord wrapped around, and you could push, like, mine had a dog bone, and you pushed it, it would bark. And one of Earl's favorite things to do would be walk down the hallway and ring my doorbell. No one would be there. Or he would beat my mom to it too. He that was one of his favorite things. She she loved to come and she you know because it made me feel all adult to have a doorbell to my bedroom, and she'd walk over to my my door and go to ring it. And before she could even touch it, it would go off and it would start barking and it would do its little bark 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 bark. And she was just like, okay, thank you. Apparently, I didn't need to do that. And he he lived with us. I moved out about nineteen, and. He was still there for a while. I eventually went to a uh, angel reader, kind of a medium angel reader lady, and she picked up on Earl and she said, "You have a presence that likes to be with you." And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, he's been with me. He hasn't, didn't move out with me or anything, but um, he still stayed at my parents' house and stuff." And and I was like, I called him Earl. She's like, "Yeah, he kind of liked that, you know." And she's like, "Well, I'll let him know that he can move on." And he kind of just is attached to you and you know and I think he feels like he just needs to stay with you and I was like well he doesn't you know he's not a nuisance he can I mean my parents have come to he's kind of part of the family it seems like and um so she said that she would kind of relay a message that he could move on if he'd like to um that you were all okay and you appreciated him and so on and after that the activity was far and few between and it's honestly been I mean I'm now 30 and so it's probably been like eight years since even my mom has heard much going on in the house or something. And um, so it seems that he kind of, he would kind of come back and forth and now he's just gone now. But he was really entertaining. And it was now that re listening to everyone else's stories and stuff, I kind of feel pretty special that I had such an active, um, you know, ghost in my life and, that he was quite comical. And I mean, I, I have so many stories. My mom would hear, you know, toilets flushing from upstairs when no one was home because the pipe would run right through her office wall. And it was just little things that he would do. It was just kind of make us known and uh, or make us know that he was there. So, I mean, he was pretty special and um, loved to turn my TV off. And I think he thought that was pretty hilarious. So, but anyways, I hope you guys can use this story, and um, I absolutely love your guys' show, and it's great for people like me who, you know, most people would think we're just weirdos, but no, this this shit happens to us, and it has happened, and I quite honestly, and how weird as it sounds, I kind of miss Earl and wish my kids 
had that kind of fun experience like I did, but I guess careful what you wish for, right? But um, yeah, thank you guys. And I look forward to hopefully hearing this. Bye. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Thoughts? See, this is what I don't get. Like, I, like, I think I'd be okay with a ghost that was like her Earl. How does that not scare you, though? Like your TV shutting off and door slamming shut. And so why can somebody else, like the TV shuts off or door slam or toilets flush, that can also be terrifying. I wonder what it is that made her like kind of love him. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder, I think it's it's a conditioning thing as far as how we react to ghosts. And I wonder if it goes back to childhood or something. Although you obviously had a lot of ghosts in your childhood. So I, yeah, I didn't find them darling or yeah. anything. I, I wonder if, if some people do, though, if for some, you know, the experience wasn't negative, wasn't scary or it wasn't perceived as such. And then later in life if you have the experience it's it's more comforting than it is scary i don't know i, I think there's Maybe something it's the family too like yeah. like the whole story about dad and like there's no earl and then this huge crash to the point they thought that structurally the house had caved in yeah. in one area and they get there and nothing had happened and like i had that happen to me once like i thought that somebody literally had run into my house with a car. That's what it sounded like. And I'm in the basement and it was the middle of the night and going up the steps. Of course, I didn't have a light at the basement steps. So I had to do it in the dark. It was just like right off of a really bad horror movie. But I get up there and there's nothing. I was scared shitless. And her family's like, well, Earl, (laughs) (laughs) like, I was like, what the F just happened? Like, there was this huge crash. What was it? Yeah. Earl. It's just Earl. Then like some of the cheesy sitcom music starts playing. It's like, dun, 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 right? dun, dun, dun. <laughs> everybody loves Earl. Everybody shrugs their shoulders. It's just Earl. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Yeah. And the but, dog comes but, into the like scene. The way she talks about him, like oh. she has this like, like she's talking about an old friend, like her uncle who she really loves and how funny he is. You know, she's got that kind of approach to it, which I love. I love that. You know, I think I'd be cool with ghosts if, if I felt like that, but those things that she described would also terrify me. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. I just don't think I could have that same approach that she's having. But good for her. I love that she does. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I wish I could be more like that. Like uh, she even said, like she was wishes her kids had an Earl. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you for sharing you that. Uh, watch out what you wish for. Exactly. Thank you for sharing that story with us. 855-853-4802 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. That's going to wrap up the program for today. If you like our show, please keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Get those bonus episodes. Get our audiobook, our ebook, all that included when you become an EPP. Five bucks a month to do so. Ghostpodcast.com or Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>